On June 9, 1983, a member of the Department of Defense wrote a paper to his superior analyzing and assessing the legitimacy of the Gateway Program. Welcome to part three of the Gateway Experience. If you haven't been here before, I highly recommend that you watch parts one and two by clicking this link. There are a lot of terms and ideas that I previously explained in this video, and if you want a deeper understanding of the Gateway Program, it's a really good way to get caught up on the ideas that I'm about to bring to the table. Again, if you're new here, I'm Zayna and this is Zayna Break Stuff. <laughs> Written by Lieutenant Commander Wayne M. McDonnell to an Army commander in Fort Meade, Maryland, this paper begins with McDonnell explaining that this commander has tasked him with learning about the Gateway Program as well as figuring out what its ultimate practicality is. He starts with a short summary that describes his process and parts of the paper. McDonnell starts by saying he had to do enough research and analysis to understand how and why this process works. This is something that he found to be very difficult. He began this process by speaking to a physician who was also taking the gateway training with him. The physician helped him navigate the biomedical models of the gateway program to gain information on the physical aspects of the process. To simplify, the physician helped him understand the physical and biological and therefore tangible effects of the process on the human body. These biomedical models were developed by Czechoslovakia-born Israeli-American scientist Itzhak Bentov, who we'll touch on again later. After learning about the biomedical aspects of this process, McDonald started to delve into various sources for information concerning concerning quantum mechanics in order to be able to describe the nature and functioning of human consciousness. He wanted to be able to create a scientifically sound and easy to understand model of how consciousness functions under the brain hemisphere synchronization technique employed by Gateway. Basically, McDonald wanted to easily and effectively communicate what consciousness is and how brainwave synchronization works in a quantitative way rather than in a qualitative way. Again, this process is qualitative and subjective. So I totally understand why McDonald found it so difficult to put a quantitative slash data-driven understanding to the process and why he felt the need to speak with as many people and gather as much information as possible from a variety of disciplines. McDonald then continues his research by learning about theoretical physics in order to better understand what the time-space dimension is and how, by way of the Gateway Program, expanded human consciousness transcends it. As a reminder, this time-space dimension is also known as the astral realm. He continues saying, quote, Finally, I again found it necessary to use physics to bring the whole phenomenon phenomenon of out-of-body experiences into the language of physical science to remove the stigma of its occult connotations and put it into a frame of reference suited to objective assessment. Like I said, he wants this report to be as scientifically sound as possible so that he can't be discredited because of occult connotations and people saying that all of this is gibberish, wibberish, jiggly jag, false. McDonald then goes into more detail about what this paper is about, but I'll just skip over that for now since we're about to cover it in detail. Then using a quote from famous physicist Neil Bohr son, quote, you are not thinking, you are merely being logical, end quote. He reiterates that parts of the paper will not only require logic, but a touch of right brain intuitive insight to achieve a complete comfortable grasp of the concepts involved. Again, McDonald is reiterating that you have to expand your idea of normal to accept some of the concepts, if not all of the concepts of Gateway. McDonald repeats this concept a few times before signing his name, signaling the end of the summary letter and beginning the actual paper. Before we continue, I really wanted to Thank you guys. The Gateway Program has been the most popular group of videos on my channel. As you can see, they were number one both times that they premiered on my channel and I couldn't have done that without you. So thank you so much and let's continue. The official title of this paper is The Gateway Program, Brain Hemisphere Synchronization in Perspective. By now you all should know what brainwave synchronization is, but in this first paragraph we do learn that the Monroe Institute of Applied Sciences did give this practice a name, hemisync. McDonald then says that he briefly wants to profile the underlying mechanics of related methods such as hypnosis, transcendental meditation, and biofeedback. These terms will be defined in a few moments, but I just wanted to clarify that McDonald is exploring and defining each of these concepts in order to give the reader a frame of reference to understand the gateway experience to by comparison. He doesn't want the reader jumping into gateway without any sort of context of understanding, so he's highlighting and identifying similar practices and ideas for that purpose. Section two is hypnosis. According to the theories of psychologist Ronald Stone and the previously mentioned biomedical engineering models of Itzhak Bentov, also known as Bentov, hypnosis 
hypnosis is a technique which permits acquisition of direct access to the sensory motor cortex and pleasure centers of the lower cerebral, AKA the emotional portions and associated pleasure centers of the right side of the human brain following a successful disengagement of the stimuli screening left hemisphere of the brain. Whew. That was a mouthful, let's break it down. For example, if someone tells you to act like a duck, your left brain takes that in and says, okay, what's this person asking? That's kind of weird, not gonna do that. And sends that information over to your right brain, which results in you not acting like a duck because you thought that was weird and you weren't gonna do that. However, if you're being hypnotized, that suggestion skips your left brain and immediately goes to your right brain because your right brain is listening to what your left brain says, which in this case was literally nothing. And so you act like a duck because that's the instruction that you were technically given by the left brain. The left brain is the self-cognitive linear thinking reasoning portion of the mind. It fulfills the function of screening incoming stimuli by categorizing, assessing, and assigning meaning to the stimuli before it goes to the right brain. On the other hand, the right brain functions as the non-critical, holistic, non-verbal, pattern-oriented portion of the mind and appears to accept what the left brain says without question. So as previously explained, if the left brain is distracted by boredom or some sort of semi sleep state, hypnotic suggestions are allowed to pass through to the right brain where they're accepted and acted upon upon in an emotional or physical manner, or both if that's the case. From a more scientific standpoint, this works because the brain's sensory and motor cortices, AKA the portions of the brain that impact physical movement as well as emotional regulation, which are located in the right cerebral portion of the brain, contain a sequence of points known as the homunculus, which correspond to parts of the body. So if a hypnotist said something like, feel happy, it would hit the emotional part of your brain and act accordingly. Same if they said your leg was numb, your motor cortex would immediately respond. This concept even applies to ideas and suggestions, such as one that informs the hypnotic subject that he enjoys enhanced concentration or powers of memory. This would be responded to by the right brain accessing unused information storage capacity, normally held in reserve for the left brain's selection and control processes. Again, to simplify, if the hypnotist says you have super memory, causing your right brain to react emotionally and using left brain storage capacity to create this enhanced memory because your left brain is totally not in control anymore and is essentially being bypassed in every way imaginable. The previous aspect will be important when examining gateway in its early stages because as you guys know from my previous videos, those stages do involve hypnosis. Section three is transcendental meditation and works in a significantly different fashion than hypnosis. In this technique, the practitioner focuses on drawing energy up their spinal cord, which ultimately results in the creation of what appears to be acoustical standing waves in the cerebral ventricles, which are then conducted to the gray matter in the right hemisphere of the brain. Really quickly, some definitions. A standing wave is a low frequency resonance that takes place between two walls, as the reflective wave interferes constructively with the incident wave. Constructively meaning that they build upon each other rather than canceling each other out, and incident referring to the original wave. So the standing wave is going back and forth between the ventricles of the brain, which are pictured here. The ventricles are responsible for the production, the transfer, transport and the removal of cerebral spinal fluid, which covers the central nervous system. So these standing waves are going from the ventricles to the right hemisphere's gray matter, where most of the brain's neurons are. The gray matter includes regions of the brain involved in, you guessed it, muscle control and sensory perception, AKA where your emotions and your motor skills live. The result of the standing waves journey, according to Bentov, is that these waves will stimulate and eventually polarize the cortex so that it will start to conduct a signal along the homunculus. Fun fact, homunculus is also Latin for little man, which is kind of funny because you know, your body parts make a person. There's a little person on your brain. Fun fact. This signal, according to Bentov, may be explained as a self-stimulation of the pleasure centers due to the circulation of the signal slash current going up and down the sensory cortex. To summarize, this current slash signal is creating an extreme pleasure, allowing for practitioners to transcend into some sort of altered state. The next section and the last frame of reference practice is biofeedback. This third consciousness altering methodology is the most unique of the three because it employs the self-cognitive powers of the left brain in order to access the motor and sensory cortices of the right brain as well as access the pain and pleasure centers. Instead of suppressing the left hemisphere like in hypnosis or simply skipping over it and ignoring it like in transcendental meditation, biofeedback has the left brain visualize what it desires and then sends that signal to the right brain in order to trigger the associated feelings and produce the desired result of the left brain. This is done through a special self 
self-monitoring device, such as a digital thermometer, to inform the left brain when it succeeds in accessing the correct portion of the right brain. McDonald provides an example then, explaining that if the subject wants to increase circulation in the left leg in order to speed up healing, he may concentrate with his left brain on getting that result by monitoring the digital thermometer connected to his left leg. When successfully connected to his leg, the thermometer on the left leg will register an increase in temperature so the subject knows that he's connected. The subject can then associate the sensation from that experience with the result achieved and can begin to emphasize by memory recall the same process by strengthening it through affirmation and repetition. This can lead to pain blocking, enhanced healing, or similar physiological results. Again, something McDonald is trying to emphasize. The physical, the quantitative, the real, things that we can see and understand. Biofeedback is also a great way to achieve a deep state meditation for beginners because of its tangible aspects. Section five is gateway hemisync, which we've pretty much covered in the previous videos. So I won't say too much about it. I'll just summarize it by saying that the purpose of the program is to quote, bring enhanced strength, focus, and coherence to amplitude and frequency of brainwave output in the left and right brains. So as to alter consciousness, moving it outside the physical sphere, so as to ultimately escape even the restrictions of time and space. The next section is lamp and laser, which is a metaphor used by Monroe Institute trainer Melissa Jagger to clarify the process involved in the use of hemisync in the gateway experience. In its natural state, the human mind is like a lamp shining erratically and chaotically in all different directions and diffusing light and energy over a wide area with limited depth. While on the other hand, the human mind under the discipline of hemisync is like a laser, which produces a disciplined stream of light. It's much more concentrated and has total consistency of brainwave frequency and amplitude. Gateway assumes that once the frequency and amplitude of the human brain are rendered coherent, AKA consistent, it's possible to accelerate both so that the human mind resonates at higher vibration levels. The next section is frequency following response, AKA FFRs. Again, we've already covered covered these, but McDonald does build on the concept. He adds to it saying, hemisync takes advantage of FFRs because when someone hears a sound produced at a frequency which emulates one associated with the brain's operation, the brain will attempt to mimic that frequency by adjusting its brainwave output. The main objective of FFRs is to relax the left brain, placing the physical body in a virtual sleep state and bringing the left and right brains into coherence under conditions designed to promote higher frequency and amplitude brainwave output. Aside from their objectives, the FFR's purpose is to provide members of the Gateway program with tools to alter their consciousness through their own volition via intuitive means to gain access to information not available in the ordinary consciousness. Essentially what Gateway wants to do, which I covered in the previous videos, is that it wants to give its subjects the tools to access this deeper state of consciousness so that eventually they'll be able to access it without these tools because they've already actively accessed this consciousness through their own volition and in a way that makes this whole process intuitive to them. Next is section eight, the role of resonance. In this section, McDonald continues explaining that FFRs are not the only reason that the gateway process works. It's also because of something called the bifurcation echo, which is when, according to Bentov, the left ventricle of the heart, the aorta, ejects blood and balloons out just beyond the valve, causing a pressure pulse to travel down along the aorta. When it reaches the bifurcation in the lower abdomen, which is where the aorta splits off into both your legs, part of the pressure rebounds and returns to the aorta. If in the meantime, the heart ejects more blood and a new pressure pulse travels down, the two points collide and create an interference pattern. By placing the body in a sleep-like state, gateway slowly fades away the body's bifurcation echo. The result is a regular rhythmic sine wave pattern of sound, which echoes throughout the body and rises into the head at a constant and consistent resonance. The amplitude of this wave is three times the sound volume produced by the heart when it's functioning normally. So essentially the gateway also creates a physical quantitative change in the body, adding to its success. Section nine is labeled brain stimulation and begins by saying that Ben Tov's biomedical model shows that the previously mentioned sine wave resonance is very important because of its direct impact on the brain. It eventually stimulates an electromagnetic pulse within the brain, which causes a rise of amplitude and frequency in brainwave output. Again, another example of the quantitative affecting the qualitative aspects of this experience. This resonance also leads to a vibration in the fluids surrounding the brain, creating a pattern in which the brain moves continuously. Of this process, Bentov states, 
This is occurring at a very long wavelength of about 40,000 kilometers, or just about the perimeter of the planet. In other words, the signal from the movement of our bodies will travel around the world in about one seventh of a second through the electrostatic field in which we are embedded. Such a long wavelength knows no obstacles and its strength does not attenuate much over large distances. Naturally, it will go through just about anything, metal, concrete, water, and the fields making up our bodies. This is the ideal medium for conveying a telepathic signal. Basically what this means is that the signal slash vibration of our bodies can potentially lead to communications between our minds, AKA mental telepathy. Section 10 is energy entertainment. Honestly, I had to read the section a few times cause I had no idea what it said. So hopefully that is not reflected in this explanation. It starts by reiterating what Bentov said about the human body turning into a coherent oscillator, vibrating in harmony with its surrounding electromagnetic field. Apparently Currently, the exercises included in the gateway tapes cause the participant to build up this energy field so that it becomes homogeneous or the same as its surrounding environment. To clarify, the body being an oscillator means it's creating electromagnetic currents and that these currents are vibrating in harmony with the environment surrounding the participant, aka the Earth's energy field. This promotes movement of the base consciousness into the surrounding environment because the electromagnetic fields are now one. This same process is what focuses the brain into coherence at steadily higher levels of frequency and amplitude and entrains analogous frequencies or create similar frequencies in the universe which can be used for data collection. Again, another example of the qualitative becoming the quantitative. In addition, by resonating with the Earth's electromagnetic sphere, the human body creates a powerful carrier wave that helps the mind communicate with similarly tuned minds. The next section is consciousness and energy. Here, McDonald wants to take a moment to really define consciousness before going forward. He goes on to talk about the relative definitions of matter and energy within this process and within this context. But the important part of this section is when McDonald says, the point to be made is that the entire human being brain, consciousness, and all is like the universe surrounding us, nothing more than an extraordinarily complex system of energy fields. The so-called states of matter are actually variances within the state of energy, and human consciousness is a function of the interaction of energy in two opposite states. McDonald elaborates on this concept in the next section labeled hologram, and honestly, this is where it gets like super weird, so hold on to your hats. But you'll have to wait till next week to find out why. See you in part four of The Gateway experience.